Welcome to the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. And the Brian Craig Show is brought to you by Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting and Roofing. He'll never sell you a roof you do not need. If you live in the state of Florida and you need roof replacement or roof repair, contact Tom Laporta at LaportaRoofing.com. Okay. Kamala has had the most disastrous weekend that a presidential candidate could possibly have. She's had multiple scandals, multiple negative events have happened. Now, of course, the mainstream media don't cover that, but the mainstream media don't matter anymore. They're irrelevant. So who cares what they cover and don't cover? They're no longer players in the game, the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. I want to start with this because uh, this, this first story, we got a lot to cover, guys. Kamala had a rally that, which by the way, this is, this, this isn't what I was going to start with, but this is just to mention, but it is one of the scandals. It's being reported, Beyonce was there at her, I hate to call it a rally, her, her meetup, <laughs> Kamala's meetup. Beyonce was there. This was the one on Friday. And it's being reported today that she was paid $10 million, Beyonce, to show up at this Kamala meetup, at this speech. She didn't even sing. She spoke for two minutes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And they uh, they paid her $10 million. Okay. How long did she speak? Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, my goodness. That's what I saw. On, I didn't watch it. That's what I saw on X. And you were noticing today, and I've seen this too. I don't know if any of you guys have noticed this, but on X, X is being overloaded with, uh, Kamala Harris post, and these are started yesterday. Yeah, I've these noticed. are um, boosted posts. I, I I suspect paid boosted posts. Yeah, which, they're you know. they're burying pro Trump stuff because typically on X you you know get the people you follow, but there's also other people that show up that are recommended or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm on X all the time. Well, you know, I go on it regularly throughout the day, and my feed has never been. So full of, I've been muting so many people of pro Kamala, very nasty anti Trump. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, there, th those are definitely paid boosted things by the campaign, and it shows you it. There's almost like a fire sale going on that the the Kamala Harris campaign. We're getting towards the end. They know they're going to lose, and they've got to spend this money. I guess uh, you know the people. Th the way it works. People that are involved in fundraising for campaigns get paid commissions, okay? And a lot of the the ad buys and things they do, well, and anything they do for a campaign, people connected to the campaign also make money off of that, right? Like I, I give you an example, just so people understand. Kamala Harris, obviously, you know, they paid they paid Beyonce the ten million, which is being reported, okay? So she gets paid for helping the campaign. These uh, boosted paid um, post on X. You just th this isn't just someone who went on X and set up some some campaign. This is something that's done through a professional political advertising campaign. The way um, advertising agencies work, advertising agencies get a commission based on the ad buy. So they get they get tw typically a commission gets twenty percent. So you've got these Democrat advertising, political advertising agencies that handle all the advertising. And you might think, well, they're just burning through money. Why? Because those political advertising people that work for the Democrats, that work for Kamala, they got to do the buy to get their 20% commission. You understand? Somebody got a commission on paying uh, Beyonce, on top of Beyonce getting the number. It, the, the advertisement they're paying for anywhere, the agency gets 20% of that. So they're doing these big ad buys because they're trying to make as much money as they can in the next week and a half because Trump's going to win and that's going to be it. So they're all trying to make, it's almost like a, it's almost like the fall of Rome. You know what I mean? They're, they're spending all the money so they can make money off of spending the money. If that makes sense to you guys. Now there was another event. This is the, this is the Friday speech that Beyonce was paid $10 million to be at for tw two minutes. Let me ask you though. Yeah. <clears throat> why did they go to Texas? Texas <clears throat> is red. It seems to me that it's a colossal waste of money. I think in their deluded mind, 
they think they can flip Texas. And if they flip Texas, which has like 40 electoral votes, Trump can't win. To me, that is pure desperation. It's got the largest number of electoral votes other than New York, but the, the, the largest state that's typically red. Yeah. And I think that they believe, well, if we can flip, you know, we're losing all the swing states. We're, we're done. But if we can flip Texas and Trump doesn't win Texas, we have a shot. And I think there's no other explanation why she would have such a huge rally in Texas. I mean, it must have cost a fortune on top of Beyonce's salary. Her mom went. They had to pay her. Kelly Rollins. They had a whole mm. bunch of mm. celebrities there that all got paid. That was probably just like $25 million just in that alone, not to mention renting out the space. You know, and the, when you go to these rallies, they don't charge you. It's free. So they, the campaign has to pay for everything. So this could have been a $50 million event at minimum. Why would they do this? The only reason I can think is that they, they're deluded and they think maybe we can flip no, Texas. I, That's our only you're, shot. You're giving them too much credit. This, this is what's going on. I don't think they're Texas, thinking straight. Texas is not going blue. No, but they might um, think it is. They don't think it's going blue. And not this election. And this this would be my guess, watching this bizarre behavior that's going on. Yeah, and why they go Burning there? through this money, like I'm telling you, so they can make money off it. There are a lot. It, Texas is not going blue. But there's a lot of Democrats in Texas, okay? There are, are donors in Texas. There's activists in Texas. There's Democrat Congress people in Texas and allies that are mayors and stuff like this, state reps and all that. I think they went to Texas to do t a couple of things. Donors in Texas, Democrat donors in Texas have to be bowed down to and kiss their ring. They wanted to have it there. Democrats that hold office in Texas wanted to produce their candidate. You know, I think it's more of that kind of stuff. I think there's a big uh, – when Kamal – see, you know, Or they wanted to make – think in their mind, make Trump nervous. No. And, and make him go there and – you're giving them too much credit, Kathy. The, if you remember when Obama, I just don't um, think you're thinking like a Democrat. When, they're no, they're in a they're in a panic right now. I could see it everywhere. When Obama won the election the first time, mm -hmm. okay, he was the only president that had won that kept his campaign intact, and he had all that campaign cash left over. He kept it intact for that. They used it to try to recall Scott Walker and a bunch of other things. When Kamala loses to Trump, there's no future for her. So all the money that they've raised for Kamala has to be spent. It has to be spent. Mm -hmm. And every dollar they spend, Democrats make money off of that. I know. So they're trying to spend all the – it's almost like Brewster's Millions with right. Richard Pryor. Right. They got a pallet of money. So they're just blowing it they've on got anything. A, they've got a week and a half to spend it. Or it's gone because there's no campaign for Kamala. She's done. She's retired. Okay. So they're, they're burning through all the money in a very short period of time, doing a lot of crazy things like paying Beyonce $10 million to show up for two minutes. Okay. I, I, that's my, you guys can let us know if you agree with Kathy, agree with me. That's what I see going on. Now I want to, I want to share this with you because this is, this is insane. And it, if this, if this were not just Trump, if this were any Republican, the entire media would be covering this, but because it's a Democrat, it's not getting a lot of coverage. Kamala brought a bunch of people up in Dr. Lab coats on stage to talk about abortion. Okay. And it's hard to say how many, I, I don't know, 15 to 20, maybe 10, 15, 20 of these people. Let's say a baker's dozen. Yeah, it's hard to say. And they're all wearing what look like Dr. Lab coats. Let me play this audio. There was a medical emergency in the audience, and they bring these people out in these doctor lab coats, and they have the big the big sign up on the screen in the in the venue: "Vote for reproductive rights." And the and they're these they're up there to talk about doctors supporting abortion, uh, which is you know I thought doctors swore an oath to protect life, not take it. But then again, Mengele was a doctor, right? So something happened though. These people in lab coach, they're on the stage. Something happened. So let me play this, and after it's done, we'll talk about it. To put it bluntly, women are unnecessarily becoming ill and dying. Nationwide, 
I, I think someone needs some medical assistance over here. Okay, someone needs medical attention, and, and uh, there's been some video and photographs of this person. It looked like they were having a seizure, mm-hmm. and all. And I, it was 15 to 20. I didn't get an exact count. It's a, it's a large number, Kathy. I think it's close to 20. Not one of these people got off the stage to render this person life-saving medical aid. Incredible. So with that, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. These are not doctors. No. If these were doctors— at least one of them they will, were all standing would, would have there gotten off the stage to help. With their heads up their ass, basically, what, what, looking yeah. around, what do we do? What do we, exactly, any doctor. They were fake doctors. Would, would one of them, at least, would yeah. rush over and help. And they all stood there because they're all actors. Yeah, they're not doctors. And this happened. There's nothing um, real about this woman. This actually happened uh, during the Obama years, and, and Obama's first term. Yeah, it was probably his idea. You know, uh, yeah, and uh, it, and that backfired. So if yep. it was his idea, it, it was not a good one to do again unless he's trying to screw over Kamala. What had happened was is they uh, – Obama and on the lawn of the White House, this was in his first term, he was pushing for Obamacare still. And he had all these doctors that were going to be on the White House lawn with him, and these doctors were going to come out and talk about their support of Obamacare. And they were wearing lab coats. Well, it came out right after the press conference that they were not wearing doctor lab coats, that they were wearing the white coats from the cooks in the White House kitchen. And from far away, you couldn't tell. And uh, people that were there spotted it. They were wearing chef's clothes from the White House kitchen. And, uh, and, of course, the question was asked, are they really doctors or actors or who are these people? Real doctors would not wear chef's coats. Well, no, I don't think so Anywhere. either. And they all were wearing them. So either all these doctors forgot to bring their lab coats or they got these doctors to wear uh, kitchen worker clothes. And, and doctors, That's in crazy. particular liberal Democrat doctors that think they're superior enough to go to an event and tell us the need of Obamacare, th- you're right. They would not wear cook's clothes. No. They wouldn't have done it. They would have been like, this is demeaning. So those were probably not doctors. These guys, there's no way these are doctors or even nurses, or they would have gotten off to or give- clinicians at all. No. They would have gotten off the stage to give this person life-saving medical I attention mean, instead of calling for a it's doctor. It's almost like the, the timing was so perfect. It's insane. I, I feel bad for the person that was hurt. There was a person having a seizure. I saw the video. Um. I feel bad for that person, but the timing was just it's crazy. Insanity. Like right when the doctors, the so-called doctors are up there, somebody is having a seizure and needs medical attention, and he's so stupid, he calls it out. Oh, so you're saying that the person might have been faking a medical condition to, no. to expose the doctors? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I think I it saw, was real. No, I think it was real. I'm just saying, what's that, what's that with the timing? That's just nuts. You know, like there's, there's, you know what I mean? That's like crazy the timing. There was that. an incident at the White House about 15 or 20 years ago. <clears throat> I, uh, I can't remember the name of the congressman. I don't even know if he's still in Congress. I don't think he is. It was a long time ago. There was a shooting at the Capitol building where, um, at the entrance, where you go through the metal detectors. And that's when they made those changes where tourists go in a different entrance. There was a shooting. Mm-hmm. And there were people shot, and there was a member of Congress who's a doctor who gave um, uh, medical care to shooting victims at the Capitol right there because they were a doctor. Ronnie Jackson on January 6th was even helping people because he's a doctor. Ronnie Jackson, when Trump got shot, was helping President Trump because he was there. Remember, he went with him to the hospital. He gave him aid. He gave him the stitches. What about the guy, the doctor that was in the crowd? He yeah. helped, tried to help Corey Campitore. That's right. That's what doctors do. It's an instinct. He came back and even spoke at the next Butler rally. So who are these imposters yeah. on no. stage with Kamala and yeah. Beyonce? Standing there looking around like, you know. What do we do? Yeah. Everything about her is fake. Everything about her campaign is fake. And if you support her, that should insult you. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't accept that. You shouldn't accept that. No. Either vote for Trump or just don't vote for her. Well, you know, what, the other. What, what Democrats tell themselves, Kathy, is, well, you know, they're not doctors, but they're representative of what doctors would say, so it's okay. That, that, that's the kind of stuff that Democrats tell themselves. It's very bizarre. And, you know, if this were yeah. anyone else, it would be Could you imagine over. if Trump did that? 
Can you imagine if Trump Never. brought, and he brings up union workers and people like that on the stage with him, and these are real people. Um, can you imagine if he brought up 20 fake doctors? <laughs> the media would talk about that forever. How could, how could you Rightfully have- Rightfully so. How could you have a stage filled with doctors? Someone's having a major medical issue right there in front of them off stage, and not one of them gets- They had to walk on the stage. When, it, when they were done speaking, they walked off the stage. So it's not like they were stranded on stage, and none of them came down to I give I mean, it was almost like an SNL skit. Honestly, mm-hmm. they w- that's how comical. I, and like I said, I feel bad for the person who was hurt, mm. but it was almost comical to watch. You, you know what it's like in in um, it, it's in one of the Dirty Harry movies. There was a plane hijacking. I, anybody remember which Dirty Harry was this? Magnum Force. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been Magnum Force. But uh, there's a hijacking, and Clint Eastwood, you know, d- d- you know, Inspector Callahan, he goes on board to get the hijackers dressed as a pilot. And he walks into the cockpit, and they want him to fly the plane. He's like, well, I can't fly the plane. He's at a captain. He's at a captain. These guys are not, and women, they are not doctors. I mean, this is so scandalous. I know. And I'll tell you, it's another thing. It's very scandalous when people in this country are suffering financially to pay Beyonce $10 million for two minutes on stage with Kamala. Crazy. I understand celebrities get paid for their time to do appearances, but Beyonce at a political rally? Are we, uh, you know, um, uh, Dennis Quaid and people like that are not getting paid to go to Trump rallies. They're honored to do it. I, th- this is very strange. Did well, Frank, Frank Sinatra, the Rat Pack, get paid by Kennedy? If she Kennedy? was I've singing, it would make sense. Like Trump mm-hmm. had that opera singer I'm, and Lee Greenwood. I'm sure they get compensated. They're performing, so they should. But when you give a two-minute speech, yeah. that's not really considered a performance. You're supposed to be there because you really support – the candidate, if she sang a song or two, that would make you sense. You think Bruce Springsteen got paid of course to, he did. to sing at the thing? Of course he did. And he sounded awful. What an embarrassment. I mean, I, I never thought Bruce Springsteen was a good singer anyway. He has cleavage. He had a shirt open and he's he literally looked really weird. got cleavage. And he's, he he's had a lot really of work weird. done. And I don't know what it is with men in Hollywood, uh, but I'm not accusing him of anything. But a lot of men are getting a lot of plastic surgery and look really skinny and small. I don't know if they're on Ozempic or what, but the men in Hollywood look like they're transitioning oh, now. Spe- it's really weird. Speaking of Ozempic. They don't look like, like okay. look at that guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, he, the big guy, the I big mean, muscular guy. what is guy? going on with him? Yeah, he's skinny as a rail. You know, um, we've, we've talked about in the last couple of weeks about how so many people at Fox News, we, we think are on Ozempic because they're so skinny. That, including Greg Gutfeld, by the way. And we had Fox on a couple days ago. And for the first time in a long time, Charles Payne was on. I did not even recognize Charles Payne. He is down like 100 pounds. He's at least he has shrunk. He has shrunk. He was sitting on the couch for outnumbered. And I always thought he was a really big guy. And I, I said to you, I guess he had like a lot of fat in his rear end. So when he'd sit on a couch, it would co- push him up. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like a cushion. Yeah. And now his like butt is gone, and he is little. I mean, I, I couldn't believe how small he looked. All these guys are, you know, like he, look, in, they, he was in his face. He looked scrawny. He looked a lot younger. I did not recognize him. He looked like a different person. And you're right; he looked shorter. And you think he, it took fat out of his out of his uh, tush. That's right, Charles Payne. I mean, it's down. better that he's. I'm sure he's healthier. But Ozempic, from what I've read, is not healthy to be on it or Munjaro or any of those drugs, they mess with your GI tract. And, uh, and I know people that have been on it and my mom had a friend on it and she had to go to the hospital cause she couldn't go to the bathroom for two weeks. Just put it that way. It slows everything down and, uh, you don't digest properly and you basically are starving yourself. Mm. You have no appetite. And that's why these people, look so deflated. They look like somebody sucked the air out of their body. Well, and you know what's crazy? It's a weird is, thing. Is television and video add weight to you? So as skinny as these people look on television in person, it must be frightening. Look at Al Sharpton. He looks like a popsicle stick. Yeah. Now he, like a blow pop. But he lost his weight before the Ozempic. He lost his weight years ago. Well, he probably had his stomach operated on because he literally is mm. so skinny that if he turns sideways, it looks like a suit on a hanger. Well, I, I don't know about Ozempic, the, the risks, the dangers, I don't know. But I do know this. It, a lot of people are on it. For sure. And uh, on TV and and, and, things, and it, it all of it. And you it, can tell. 
all of a sudden everybody's on this. It it seems like there's not enough known about it for so many people just to recreationally take this. But is it made for weight loss or was it made for something else? It's made for diabetes, <laughs> but people also take it to get them off booze. It apparently oh. kills your cravings for sugar okay. and alcohol. So I'm guessing a lot of people in Hollywood um, – use it for that reason yeah. to get off drinking. Um, it's like very effective because it affects your taste buds in a certain way where you like literally get sick. If you drink a drink like a Coke mm. or anything, anything with sugar you throw up. So I think in a play and so, and they lose a ton of weight also because uh, it's, it does something with yeah. that. It basically gets you completely off sugar, but it takes the fat completely out of your face right away. And that's why they call it the Ozempic face. And you see people where they have like a sunken in cheeks and a yeah. sunken in eye sockets. I don't think it's a good look. Well, guys, look at Charles and they Payne. Look, it's tiny. Now, he may look a little different on Fox Business because he's at a desk and the camera's just on part of his body. When he was on Outnumbered, the camera was on his profile a lot because he's on the couch and you got to see his whole body because, you know, he's the one lucky guy in the center of that round couch, you know, like that horseshoe shaped couch. It, it, it was weird what he looked like. It was very weird, Charles Payne. And you Payne. lose the weight very fast. And I always like Charles Payne. Now, uh, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you all so much for your support. And remember, those of you that are Patreon supporters, uh, you have access to commercial-free editions of all of our podcast episodes, okay, on the Patreon page. And our top Patreon supporters – Get a live, on-air thank-you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, George, Brandon, Rob, and Trish Wilkerson, Christy R., and John S. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Now, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter of the program, there's a link in the description of the episode and every other episode, too. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co host Kathy. We'll take a quick break and be right back. How would you like to unlock the secrets to financial freedom and at the same time, stay true to your faith? It is possible. You just need the right help and guidance. And that's what you will find in the new book from author Leroy L. Deal, Faith and Financial Fortune, A Christian's Guide to Generational Wealth, available on Amazon. With Faith and Financial Fortune, you'll discover biblical wisdom that's paired with modern financial strategies that work. Whether you're just starting out or well into your financial journey, this book is for you. You'll learn how to make Manage your money, grow your wealth, and create a lasting financial legacy that honors God. Faith and Financial Fortune includes everything from mastering budgeting as well as investments to building a successful business. This book has everything you need to make wise financial decisions that are grounded in faith. No matter your age or background, it's never too late to transform your financial future. With Faith and Financial Fortune, you'll gain the tools you need to build wealth for generations and support the people and causes you care about. Turn your faith into financial fortune. And order your copy of Faith and Financial Fortune, A Christian's Guide to Generational Wealth from author Leroy L. Deal on Amazon. Your journey to abundance begins right now. Faith and Financial Fortune on Amazon. When it comes to safety at work, you deserve the best. Protex-DZ.com equips workers just like you with top quality safety gear and workwear that's designed to protect and enhance your performance. Whether you work in construction, healthcare, road work, warehouse work, and more, Protex-DZ.com have what you need and what you're looking for. From durable steel toe safety sneakers, tactical military boots, or construction rain boots, your feet will be protected in any environment. Need head protection? Protection? No problem. Protex-DZ.com carry everything from construction helmets to anti-fog gas masks. They even have face shields. And don't forget about hand protection. Their selection includes industrial gloves, kitchen gloves for restaurant workers, welder gloves, and even insulated gloves for electricians. When you're looking for custom gear, Protex-DZ.com have an incredible selection of print-on-demand items, including phone cases, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. You can customize them for holidays 
holidays like Halloween and Christmas, and they ship worldwide. Visit the store right now at Protex-DZ.com. View the inventory. You will be impressed. You can also find them on Facebook at ProtexDZ. And right now, their countdown discount has started. Buy one item, get 20% off. Buy two, receive 25% off. And buy three, you'll get a 30% discount. Protex-DZ.com. Your partner in safety, performance, and style. Protex-DZ.com. Would you like to build a brand, one that's known worldwide and loved? How would you do it? And where would you even begin? Find out how to do all that and more in the book from authors Kevin Kelly and Debbie Smorsky, The Disney Way for the Digital Age, Beyond Pixie Dust, available on Amazon. In this must-read book, you'll learn how to master the balance between today's cutting-edge technology and company culture. You'll learn how to harness Disney's timeless principles, which are branding, customer service, innovation, and how to integrate them with AI, automation, and modern tools so that you could create unforgettable customer experiences. Whether you're an executive with an established company or leading a startup, in the Disney way for the digital age, you'll find actionable steps to blend tradition with technology and learn to build a brand that not only survives, but thrives. With over three decades of experience, author Kevin Kelly has worked with top brands like Amazon and Hard Rock. Author Debbie Zamorski brings her expertise from her 34-year career working at Walt Disney World. She held leadership roles throughout the company, and she's also worked with Fortune 100 companies as well as startups. They know what works and what doesn't, and they share their experience with you in The Disney Way for the Digital Age. What are you waiting for? It's time to elevate your business with strategies that have stood the test of time and technology. The Disney Way for the Digital Age Beyond Pixie Dust is available right now on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now and make your brand match and successful. The Disney way for the digital age beyond pixie dust on Amazon. How would you like to brighten up someone's day? Then check out the luxexpress.etsy.com. That's Lux spelled L U X X. The Lux Express specializes in hilarious mugs, cups, t-shirts, totes, beach bags, wine tumblers, wall art, and so much more. The Lux Express are all about making the world a happier place, and they're doing it one smile at a time. Whether you're in the mood for a good laugh, a little motivation, or some inspiration, they have something for everyone. They also accept custom orders so you can create that perfect gift. And make sure to stop by for your holiday shopping too. Use the promo code Brian and save 15% off your order. TheLuxExpress.Etsy.com That's Lux, L-U-X-X. Funny, motivational, and inspirational products. TheLuxExpress.Etsy.com You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So we've only just begun here. Kamala's had a really bad weekend. Um... Something's been circulating on social media throughout the weekend, and it got debunked right away. There is a photograph, supposedly, of Kamala Harris in the old school McDonald's uniforms, which I miss. I I miss those old uniforms. I like those uniforms, yeah. I I really do. Um, And it turns out it was a photoshopped photograph, and they put Kamala's head because the original photograph was found, okay, that they photoshopped from. I guess, you know, the way it works, I, I don't know if they got this off Google Images or something, but it's not that difficult with uh, programs today to find the original no, photograph. It looks legit until you see the original photo. So they have uh, Kamala's head photoshopped, which we now learn, but it, it's it's well done. It, ma- it is well done. The, the arms match the head. Uh, it looks like her. The original photograph was found because it was in a 1980s, 70s living room, and you could see the furniture and the carpet and everything. They they photoshopped her head on the body of a white girl. That's right. Um, because it, it matches because perfectly. It ma- Because they had to match the skin tone. They had a picture of Kamala from that time period, from when she was in high school somehow, and they had to match the skin tone. So they put her head, her face on the body of a white girl 
and it matches perfectly. The arms match her face um, perfectly. But I haven't seen anybody other than us pick up on that yet. Mm-hmm. So if anybody picks up on that, you heard it here first, because that is the first thing and we noticed was, why is she not on the body of a black girl? Because her face looks pretty damn white. Um, and there's, a, uh, there's an article about her father in the well, New York well, Post well, today, get, so you can see what that. he looks like. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Now, this, this McDonald's photograph, they chose this photograph for two reasons. The second one you'll find out there's an article in the Post Millennial, and there's something revealed in that that shows you why they picked it other than mm. the white girl skin matched uh, Kamala. I and mean, I would think that would outrage the black community, rightfully so. Yeah, she, yeah I she, mean, you she's, know, she's going around acting like she's all black, and they had you know, to use a white like, girl's body to get it to match. She's like that white girl that was heading up the uh, NAACP chapter in California. Yeah, Rachel Donzel. Yeah. Right, you know, it, or Michael Jackson. In the old days, well, everybody knew he was black, but in the old days, I'm just kidding. Blacks they could would pass as white to make it. Now, people are passing as black to make it. So I think we need to get over this thing that yeah, there's a great there's book on uh, that you know descript- it's it's tough to be black. Listen to that. So this is in the post millennial. I'm going to read through this article, and then the second paragraph, um, they oh, it's in the first paragraph actually. They um share why. They picked this person, I think, other than the skin matched. And they did pick the the original woman is a Canadian. And they picked a Canadian because they wanted the uniforms they to meet, match. That's right. Make sure there was not I'm an sure, issue that's with the right. uniforms. I'm sure they had different uniforms. So, yeah. So this I, was very well thought out. Or it may have been minor differences, but they wanted to make sure that right. they, it was the right exactly. uniform. Exactly. This is like a Dan Rather. Listen to this. Oh, yeah, it is. Listen to this. A, this is post millennial. Which is, and the Post Millennial is a conservative online publication out of Canada. So that's, that's uh, Kamala's home turf, right? Oh, I didn't know they were Canadian. Yeah, they're Canadian. And they're very good. I read the Post Millennial every day. They're very, if you guys don't go to the postmillennial.com, you should. They're very good. Trudeau's numbers are tanking, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Okay, so this is, the, there. this is the article. A digitally altered image of Kamala Harris dressed as a McDonald's employee has gone viral on social media. Sparking debate over her recent claim that she once worked at a McDonald's in Almeida, California. Okay, that's outside San Francisco. Yeah, okay. not trail. Mm-hmm. She wasn't living there in high school. Mm-hmm. The photo widely sh- – no, she was in Canada. Right. The photo widely shared by some liberal users as supposed proof of Harris's claim is actually a modified image of a white Canadian woman – who passed away from cancer in 2007. Oh, my gosh. So the, that is absolutely awful. It's, it's disgusting. And this woman was chosen for the, these reasons. One, her white skin matched her face. Two, it was a Canadian McDonald's, so the uni- there'd be no problems with the uniform. And third, uh, uh, dead women tell no tales. That's exactly right. So she couldn't come out and say, that's me. These are despicable people. So this How is did they the, find that? Kudos to whoever found that original. Somebody must have seen the photo because this photo just went on X. Well, let me read the yesterday. article. Maybe they'll tell us because they give us some information. And somebody in her family. Yeah, I'd like to know they, who they, turned that in. They have the woman's name, which I'm not going to say the name. It's yeah, in they this, know who it is. It's in this article. I'm not going to say her name because out of respect for her and, you know, in her family, I don't know what their thoughts are. Okay. She passed away a long time ago. And well, I'd be pretty I, pissed you know. if it was me. The original photo of is – they have her name here – the woman who passed away from cancer in 2007, a, a, and it was found on an archived webpage about her life. Uh, Kamala Harris previously claimed she worked at McDonald's when she was younger, but solid evidence is still yet to come forward to verify the claim. Um, and let me tell you something. Typically, I'm saying – I I didn't work at McDonald's, but typically when you're a teenager and you have your first job, there are pictures of you in your uniform, especially if you wear a uniform. You know, I don't have a picture of me in my first job that I know. Well, of. you're just not normal. I don't because think because I, I do. think when kids get a job at McDonald's or Publix or somewhere, their parents take a picture of this, them this at are, some point in their new unit. When I got my first job, I had my I, I worked at Learners. I'm, maybe my in mother the mall, does. Yeah, you're and right. I had my name tag. I didn't have a uniform, but yeah. my mom took a picture of me with my name tag because she was so proud of me. That's typically what parents do. Yeah. Especially like a big company like McDonald's where you're wearing like a uniform and it's like official. I would think that uh, there would be a there would be a photo of her 
to, you know, if she did work there. But the fact that they had to Photoshop this tells you that she didn't. It's just confirmation. Yeah. Um, so th- there's no other details about the woman or the photo in the article. The rest of it's just about I would it, love in general. her family to come forward. If she had kids outraged. or a mother, I would be outraged. somebody, a brother to come forward and say that is my sister and it's disgusting. Mm. If they if they like Trump, they might come forward and say something. But I think Trump should talk about this and confirm it and verify it. And, sh- you know, he shows videos at his rallies and put the two pictures up and say what we said and say, say this is a woman that not only is white, but she is deceased. And what a horrible thing to do to somebody who's passed away. I mean, that's just dis- – liberals and, just are on a whole other and, level and, of – And how insulting – Despicable. How insulting to blacks to try to pass Kamala off with a white girl's body here. Crazy. I, yeah. I, I, I would think people would be pretty pissed about that. I would I, – they had to match the skin tone, so there's they too many, searched and there, searched. There, there's too many things here. The skin tone, Canada, the woman's passed away. There's too many things here just to be somebody did this. This this was something that was actively done. This took time. By her campaign. Yeah. Pe- or people connected to the campaign to try to save her reputation here. This, this took time to me. This did not yeah. happen in an afternoon. This took, they probably gave it an assignment to somebody and this is, you know, on her team. Mm-hmm. And this is what they came up with. And it was, thank because of X and the internet, you, you can't fool people anymore. You just can't, you know, it makes you wonder how much. Uh, the media has lied to you in the past. Mm-hmm. You can't trick people mm-hmm. anymore. But I also wanted to address the Joe Rogan interview. Okay. Uh, real quick. Um, Trump had, it was a great interview. I watched the whole thing this morning. It was a great interview. One of the best. But Joe Rogan, um, he, he did a few things to try to make Trump look bad. Like he um, looked at his ear and he, he kind of alluded that it really wasn't that big a deal. Like, oh, that's healed up nicely. I can hardly see it. And this and that. So what the hell does that mean? He wasn't shot. I mean, sorry, I didn't get hit. He sorry, was shot I moved. In the, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Um, sorry, so God moved me out of the way, off. Joe. And a um, he's a jerk. He won't officially endorse Trump because he's a coward. Okay. Even Trump said to him, I know you're not going to vote for Kamala. There's no way. Um, he's a coward. But it was a good interview. And Trump talked about the Lincoln bedroom. And he talked about Lincoln's son that had died. And he got the name mixed up. He said it was Tad. Tad did die in 1871 when he was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize Lincoln had a son so young. All his children died except one who lived to be an old man. His son, Tad, died after Lincoln from um, some illness, TB or something. But he also had a son that died when he was 11 who who called William, who Mm -hmm. was named after her father, who was a doctor. He's the one that died in the White House. He died in the White House. So Mm -hmm. it's an easy mistake to make, okay? He did have a son. He had two well, who's sons. Who's giving him a hard time about it? I, People on X. So Trump oh, doesn't know his history, and Trump didn't got. He just got the name mixed up because he did have two sons that died. That's an honest mistake, and one did die while he was in the White House. He just got the names wrong because both sons died. You know, one um, just died after Lincoln. Lincoln Lincoln's uh, oldest son, who was with President Lincoln when I think he Robert died, was his yeah, name? Robert Lincoln, yeah, Robert Todd Lincoln. Robert Lincoln was with his dad when he died. But uh, he went on to work uh, in, in Republican Party politics. He was in the ca- he was with President Garfield when Garfield died, and Robert Kennedy or Robert Kennedy Robert Lincoln, um, President Lincoln's son, is the only person who has been with two presidents when they died from assassinations crazy. in history, and it's kind of you know crazy. But anyway, uh, oh, so I just want to address that. But it was a great you know, interview. The, let me Very say this about the, the the interview. Okay, I think it was. Probably the best interview Trump has ever done. Yeah, very Joe, interesting. Joe Rogan brought up a lot of things that were very interesting. Yes. Um, there were a couple things I didn't like. Uh, I don't know. I knew he was going to do this, but I think it makes you look stupid to bring this up uh, about the UFOs. He's been asked about that so many times. It, even if it's true, which I don't believe it is, even if it's true, he's not going to tell you. It's Trump classified. said he doesn't believe it. No, he said, um, he said that it, these pilots told him about these things traveling like, Five or ten times mm-hmm. faster than our fastest jets, and they were round. I don't know, but I don't think they're aliens, and he doesn't either. He says he's not into that. And no. You could tell, and yeah, I thought it, he demeaned himself, Joe Rogan, asking such a stupid thing. 
But the one thing that Joe Rogan did yeah, that, that I didn't like, and, and let me tell you, I don't want to take away from the interview because I think Joe Rogan did an incredible job on that interview. Mm-hmm. He, he asked Trump a lot of things that he had never been asked before, and right. it, was, it, it was a very important interview, which we'll talk about in a minute. But his constant use of profanity, in particular the F word, uh, Joe Rogan, I know that he talks that way and, and, and everything, but to, I, I thought it was disrespectful to speak that way to a president. In I my totally opinion, agree. I thought totally it was I, and I thought it I thought it was disrespectful to President Trump and to the country and everything else. I mean if I Biden like was there or Kamala mm-hmm. even or anybody, I wouldn't like that. I think you well, have yeah. to have some reverence for the position mm-hmm. and to interview him and drop the F bomb over and over and over again. And Trump just rolled with it because I'm sure Trump uses that word. But it's so I don't think Trump even probably thought about it. But I think if you're interviewing a president or a former president, I think out of respect, you should clean up your language a little bit and have. I just think that's the proper thing yeah, to do. And, and he said it many you know, times. A, a, a few things about this interview. One about the F word stuff, which I thought was just very disrespectful. And I thought Joe Rogan demeaned himself. He looked classless. Yeah, he looked classless. I understand he's got the largest audience. However, many millions of people that don't even know who Joe Rogan is will watch and hear that interview. And the first introduction he wants to people that have never heard him is that. I I don't think that was good. No. But the importance of the interview is two two things. It's had like 20 million views almost. That's just on YouTube or 24 something. 24 hours, right. You know, who knows how many on other platforms like Spotify. But I, I think the it, it was a very important interview. I think it was one of Trump's best, if not the best interview. Mm-hmm. But a couple things about it. One, that, that, that make it significant, very important, is this. And I think this might be the biggest. Um, Joe Rogan has many millions of people that listen to him and many people that may not listen to him all the time that have in the past will tune in. Tens of millions of people. I don't know how many people are going to watch that within the next week or hear it, but it's going to be a lot. Tens of millions of people will hear Trump for the first time in his own voice. And what I mean by that is they'll hear Trump in a very casual conversation, like two guys sitting down on a couch and hear Trump, what he's really like, not through the filter of Joy Reid, right. Rachel Maddow, or the and View, he's and very likable and very and, down to earth and, and cool. And and I think tens of millions of people will say, "Wow, he's really a nice guy. I like this guy. He's yeah. nothing like he's not they, like Hitler. They portray him, yeah. yeah, exactly. And and so I think that was the most important with his Jewish grandchildren thing of that interview. Yes, that people would be like, "Wow, this what they're saying about him and his personality just isn't true. This is amazing how he is." And that happens to a lot of people, Brian. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have this idea of Trump and then they watch him, they see something and they're like, wow, I've been lied to this whole mm-hmm. time. And that, and then they vote for him. So hopefully it'll reach a lot. A lot of people have already voted. So I hope there aren't people that have voted for her that are going to regret it. There might be, but I hope it reaches a lot of people before they go to the voting booth. Yeah. And no, another thing is this. Okay. Um, there's, it, it really makes Kamala look even weaker than she already does. There's no way – I know uh, Joe Rogan in that interview was sucking up to Kamala because he still has this fantasy that she might come on. She, she's like, if she came on – President Trump did a three-hour interview with Joe Rogan. If Kamala went on – the interviews she's done have been 12 to 20 minutes. That Brett Baer interview was like 15, 20 She'll never minutes. do it. She can't and follow that. No. Right. She and can't follow that she, act. So if she were to do that interview, she's never even done a full hour. When she does these – speeches they're even very short just a few minutes how long would it be into that interview before she was repeating the those lines yeah i grew up a middle class working class family i you know she because she doesn't want you to know her they don't want you to know her past or anything about her that is why they they are purposefully like this mcdonald's vague they don't want people to question her and joe rogan says oh i like people to get there if she sat down there for a three-hour interview in 40 minutes max, probably less, she'd be repeating those lines. That's one. And, and, the, and the second thing is what you had just said. There's too many mysteries you know, about her that they're afraid would be explored. McDonald's, uh, the, the, the Willie Brown stuff. You know, there's well, a lot Brett of Bear things. Brett Baer said that she had four handlers waving their arms up and down 
10 minutes in. In a friendly interview. Yeah. Brett Bear, Brett Bear did a good job, but it would, and he did question her, but it would be friendly in comparison to this because Rogan would get into these personal things like McDonald's. So, and, and if she did do it, not only that, does she, uh, does she have the stamina to sit there for three hours? You know, Donald Trump- I don't Trump, think she'll be doing any more can interviews. Can you imagine doing a three-hour interview and not getting up to go to the bathroom? You know, and it was commercial free. And then he gets on a plane and goes to this rally in Michigan. And mm-hmm. the media Amazing. are reporting that the Trump people were pissed and walked out, you know, and all of this. I, I live streamed this morning. I did a live stream on YouTube this morning really early. I started mm-hmm. like about a little bit before 6 a.m. And I did about an hour and 15 live, uh, minute live stream in front of uh, Starbucks. And uh, there was this liberal guy behind me. You know, uh, what happened was I go into Starbucks and order my uh, coffee and I don't have all my stuff with me. I don't have my microphone. I have my phone, but I don't have my microphone. And I take my MAGA hat off because anytime I go into a restaurant or something, I don't wear my MAGA hat because I don't trust them. Okay, with the handle, something I'm going to yeah, consume. Yeah, your coffee. So I, or give me decaf, just something, you know, when I want caffeinated coffee, anything. You That's know. what liberals do. They, but they could spit in it. You, you know, I watch them, but who knows what goes on behind that counter. Um, so then I go, I go to my car and I get my microphone and my MAGA hat. You guys will see me if you watch that video on the live stream. I started it when I was inside. I didn't have my um, hat on yet. And I sit down outside at a table in front of the Starbucks, and I put my MAGA hat on, and I'm li- and I'm, I've got my uh, phone out live streaming on YouTube, and I'm talking to the mic. This liberal guy um, sat behind me, and he and he pulls up on uh, on his phone. He pulled up Sirius Satellite Radio, and he put on MSNBC, and he mm. turned it up really loud. Now you can't hear it funny. on the video because I have really good microphones. I have directional microphones that only pick up the sound that's directly in front of it doesn't pick up that sound going on and he was trying to like disturb me by playing yeah uh, and, and i've never uh live streamed from the starbucks before it's not the one i've gone you've seen me go to in the past this is a different one and uh, he turned it up like full blast i couldn't believe and he sat there the whole time i did the live stream which mm-hmm. was about an hour and 10 hour and 15 minutes or something close to it and then when i ended the stream he stopped and as I was walking to the car, he was staring at me like he was he was silently judging me with my MAGA hat. I had my gold MAGA hat on. It was so bizarre, Kathy. You know, it's not the first time I've had this happen at Starbucks. Cra- liberals well, what are do you expect so. When you go to Starbucks. I mean, you know, this was a customer. You know, I mean, so the same thing. They, these people, the left, are so intolerant. Yeah. Now I want to um, tell everyone about Mike Lindell and my pillow. You know, if you want to support the show, obviously there's many ways to do it. But one of the ways to support the program is to use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com. And when you do that, not only are you supporting the podcast, my YouTube channel, and the radio show, you're also supporting Mike Lindell and MyPillow, who has just been put through so much because of his support for President Trump. And uh, this is the time, guys. I know Halloween's not here yet, but it's the time to do some Christmas shopping because the prices are so, so low. You can use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, on all the specials at MyPillow.com, no matter what the specials say. And, of course, not, and um, you're not limited to the ones I talk about. But the, this incredible price going on right now on the MyPillow, it's just $14.88 with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. That's a super low price, and it makes a great Christmas gift. Whoever you give the gift of this MyPillow to – uh, we'll uh, just remember it and have it for years to come. We got my mother one for Mother's Day years ago, years ago. And uh, when I go to my mom's house, and uh, she always talks to me about that my pillow. Always, every time I'm at her house. I was at my mom's house uh, recently, and uh, she was going through some old family pictures and everything. And um, I'd asked my mom to write everybody's name on the back of the pictures who's in it. Because I don't know who a lot of the people are. And I said, Bob, after you're gone, I'm not going to know who they are. And then after I'm gone, our daughter, she's not going to know who anybody is. So she was going through some of these old pictures. And we were in her bedroom. And she's like, look, I've got your my pillow here, right? And I, out of all the gifts I've given my mom since um, I've been alive, the only gift she has, and she's had it for years, is the my pillow I gave her. They make great gifts. And at this price, $14.88, you could buy a whole bunch of them. 
and give them to a lot of people. And that's, of course, with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Also, free shipping on all orders over $75 with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout at MyPillow.com. But anyway, um, this thing about Trump, he was about, what, two hours late to the— Three hours. Three hours late to the— rally last night, which I didn't see last night. I fell asleep. It was too late for me. Um, a couple things about this. One, think about what he did. He, he does a three-hour interview, which is exhausting with Rogan. It is. He got on his jet. He made a video on the plane that they – and sent it to the rally. He had them fly at full maximum speed to get there. And, and I think that was good he, he did that because he let them know so in case somebody had to go home. He, he said, I will be there within two hours. His people wanted him to cancel it. So he said he, no. He let them know two hours before. So he was about an hour in. And uh, I think that was a good thing to do because that's when probably people decided, well, I, I got kids or I got to go to work. So I guess I'll have to leave. Well, yeah. And, and then he, he came on. And he yeah. went in the video. He said he had them fly at the maximum speed that they could fly. You know how much that cost him in jet fuel, added jet fuel? You know what happens when you drive your car faster, you burn more gas, right? And uh, some people did leave, and I saw some of them on social media being interviewed. The media all like, so people are walking out on Trump. Yeah, first Um, time it's ever happened. One woman said, I'm here with my kids. We've been, they're little kids. We've been here for a long time. We're going to the car, but I'm going to come back in with them, okay? They're just going to get some rest. Um, uh, Another person said, I got to work first thing in the morning. I got to get home to go to work. And when and I went this morning uh, after I watched the Rogan interview with President Trump, all three hours of it, which was fantastic. It was the fastest three hours of my life. Okay, I, I mean, it was just yeah, I was, was like good. I was like sad it was over. I could have gone another three. It was so yeah. good. It was so good. I don't think he realized the time because it, it went by very yeah. fast. And when he and notice his people weren't f- swinging no, their arms like Kamal weren't. after ten minutes with Brett. Bear. But when he, I, I went and watched uh, the beginning of his. They know better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to interrupt him. I went sure. and watched the beginning of his rally in Michigan after, and he addressed it right in the beginning. And the people there did not mind. They He's, understood. He apologized. And, 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 and here's the thing. MAGA people, he took a bullet for us, and he, and he wanted to continue the rally. He, got fight, he took a bullet. He got a fight, 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 right? And he, and he went back to Butler, and, and, we, and everything he's been through, you know what they put him through. MAGA people don't mind being inconvenienced by a couple of hours because he's mm-hmm. he's doing an interview that a hundred people, hundred million people are going to watch this week, right. okay? Uh, because he sacrificed. They could they could they, we don't mind sacrificing a, two three hours and of our time. It's the first time that's ever happened. You know, yeah, exactly. Out Give of hundreds and hundreds of rallies. So. Give me a break. I, no, I, they're, I, they're grabbing onto and anything. Here. I love how all these liberals are all concerned about the inconveniencing yeah. of MAGA people at a rally. Well, they're saying what a joke. They were saying he was inconsiderate. And I said, I responded to this one guy. I said, no, it would be inconsiderate if he did this all the time. Correct. I said, but this was a first time. And this is almost, you're in the, he's got like maybe 10 more rallies left. He said, this is winding down and this is coming to the end. He said that now I'm sure he'll do rallies in the future. Maybe, but not like this. He has said multiple times that we're winding down. This is coming to the end. So he's got maybe 10, 12 rallies to go at the most. He's added more to his docket. So you go to trumpevents.com to see. And first time that's happened where he's been late because of traveling and other things. These things happen when you have back-to-back things scheduled. And I think the interview went so well that, you know, remember when he was on with Elon, that went on for two hours. Yeah. And it probably goes by when he probably finished, he probably was like, holy crap, that that went, I didn't realize I was here this long. And he got on the plane and he let them know. And he, and you know what, if he was a jerk, he would not have let them know because he would have said, you know what, if I tell them I'm late, they're going to leave. But he let them know anyway, because he wanted them to know I will be there in two hours, basically you can stay or leave. It's up to you. Yeah. If he was an a-hole, he would not have done that because he would have been like, well, if I go on and tell them, they're going to walk out. And he spoke for- So he gave them a, and, a per, kind of permission. And he's, This is when I'm going to be here, decide what And he spoke for about an hour and 20 minutes, yeah. right? He did a three-hour interview with yeah. Rogan in Texas, got on, on his jet, flew to Michigan. I don't know how his voice holds and up. He, he must and have he went some to, how did, special I don't know how he has the uh, energy. Oh, and you, you, you know, the voice. When I'm off the air- yeah. Uh, when, you know, I don't talk a lot. And and one of the reasons I don't talk a lot 
is because I have to use my voice for the radio, for the podcast, for YouTube. I have to rest my voice. He might do that, you know, in between events. Yeah. He might not talk as much. Yeah. And and maybe Dr. Jackson has told him, rest your vocal cords. You have to. Or you're going to go hoarse. Like, you know, don't mm-hmm. talk, drink tea with lemon and honey. He might do those things to, to you know. Does keep, Trump look like a lemon and honey? I don't drink tea with lemon and honey in it. People always tell me I should. You should. It's very good for your throat. It's just, it's amazing. You know, I on the it. on the last cruise, I took a behind the scenes tour of the Broadway show and it was given by the cast. And one of the lead singers gave us the tour and they took us back to the, to the girls' dressing room. <laughs> Gotta be hot tea. And they all had honey in their lockers. They showed us inside their lockers. It yeah. was really, you know. It, hot tea with lemon and honey. And they all had honey good. in it. Yeah, yeah, I should try. We, I bought honey but after that cruise, but I've not used it. Maybe I should try to do that. Yeah. But in I fact, want you, we have Trump honey. Yeah, that's true. We have now, Trump now think about this, though. Everything he did, he went to that rally in, in the central time zone. He's a Florida man. And he still has that energy. I fell asleep. I, I was tired just watching, right? And I, I, and I fell asleep because it was too late for me. I've been up a long time. He, he is not a mortal man, Donald I Trump. got to say, he looks better than ever. Doesn't the he? The last few, mm-hmm. he's always looked good, but the last few rallies, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe he's drinking more water and less Diet know. Coke, but he looks fantastic. I yeah. mean, really, his skin looks great. He looks healthier. I know he's lost weight. He said he's lost about 25 pounds. Um, maybe he's eating a little better, having less sugar. I don't know. But he really looks really good. Like, I, one time I went totally off sugar. It was really hard. I did it for like two months. It was hard for me too. And I went to see my doctor, and the first thing he said to me was, your skin looks amazing. What are you yeah. doing? My yeah. cardiologist. And I said, I'm off sugar for two months. Because it causes inflammation. I can't live that way. I just like sugar. No, I like them. I like them. And I like he my said, sugar well, too. you can tell. He said, mm-hmm. your skin looks brighter. You look, I, I don't know if he's off sugar or not, but he looks really good, better than I've ever seen. He looks and younger. His he, skin he, looks he, great. He looks great. And he had on, um, he had on a, I like the navy blue suits better than the, ro- I hate royal blue. I love blue, but that's the one blue I hate. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, Brian's wearing a royal blue shirt right now. Yeah, it's a Trump and he, shirt. And he had on a navy blue. He wears the dark navy blue. And I've noticed since he was shot, he went from royal blue to the navy blue. And he had a yellow tie. He looked amazing last night. Really fantastic. He always looks good. But yeah. I thought, God, this guy just looks so good. And then he had two rallies today in Pennsylvania. And tomorrow is the big, or Sunday when this airs, I guess today, uh, is the the big Madison Square Garden rally, and they're gonna Which start coverage out. early. Yeah, that's gonna be, or as Hillary calls it, the the Hitler Nazi that, rally. That you know, this thing about she's a lunatic. You know, today, um, I I went to see uh, Doctor Appleton. You know, our laser way pain doctor that I go to. You know, I had a follow up visit from my shoulder in- injury and. Uh, by the way, I met three listeners who were there when I Amazing. was there. Last Saturday when I went there, there were four li- – all, all of them getting treatments. And your shoulder's all better. In fact, you went the first time and you said it's 90% better. I was in a lot 90%, of pain too. 90% and you were in a lot of pain. Yeah. And uh, now I'm pain – I'm totally yeah, pain-free. totally pain-free. But, um, you know, but, it, but anyway, I was, was, I was t- uh, talking with Dr. Appleton and one of our listeners who was a patient. He was getting the, the laser treatment done and we were talking. And uh, he was talking about, yeah, the, the uh, patient, he says, oh, they're saying Trump's they're having a Nazi rally because it's Madison Square Garden. And I said, Billy Joel had a whole residency for years at Madison Square Garden. Is Billy Joel a Nazi too? Because exactly. he plays Madison. How many, everybody plays Madison Square Garden. If you live in the state of Florida and you need a new roof or a roof repair from the recent hurricane or just because, well, it's time to get a roof repair. Give Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting and Roofing a call. He covers the entire state of Florida. Tom Laporta works on every type of structure and with every type of roofing material. Small single family homes, large homes, uh, condos, HOAs. If you have a community that has one building or 200 buildings, Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting can handle the job. He works on Commercial roofs. He also works on municipal buildings, churches, schools, warehouses. If it has a roof, Tom Laporta can help. And he'll never sell you a roof you do not need. I'm going to give you his cell phone number. And he only gives his cell phone number out to our listeners. Okay, this number is not on his website. This is his personal cell phone number to the owner of the company, Tom Laporta. It's 954 954- 
954-604-4602. Online at LaportaRoofing.com. But you can call or text 954-604-4602. 954-604-4602. For Tom Laporta at Laporta Contracting and Roofing, a good MAGA guy who will never sell you a roof you do not need. All right, we're out of time for today. My name is Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time.